Well, you are very welcome to this video. It's Friday the 5th of April. Now, today's video is remarkably easy to understand, but difficult to watch. If you're anything like me, you'll be struggling to retain control. It's about a court in the United Kingdom. Yeah, that's right, the United Kingdom, Great Britain, land of the free, home of the brave, where a mother is being dragged through the court system because she refused to have her son vaccinated for the COVID vaccine three years ago. And when you watch this, you may consider this is absolutely outrageous state overreach. But I'll let you make your own decision on that. Now, let's look at some of the detail here. Now, this is... Um, this is the title, Should I Decide If My Vulnerable Adult Son Has a Covid Vaccine, Not a Judge? Sarah, uh, her instinct to protect Tom, a 24-year-old son with complex medical conditions, could be overridden by one of Britain's most powerful courts. This is the Court of Protection. Now, Sarah and Tom are not real names, and of course we, we protect their identities. We don't know what it is, but this is published in the Daily Telegraph. And it's interesting, the Daily Telegraph is one of the probably actually the only uh, media outlet in the UK uh, to um, question the, the, the current narrative and question the overreach of the state, which is, is quite encouraging. Many other medias do, of course, but th this is pretty mainstream stuff. So um, do check that out for yourselves. Uh, they should be trying to, uh, they should be proving to us that it's safe, not me trying to prove that it isn't, says Sarah, the mother. All I've ever wanted to, to be is a great mother and protect my son. And the son, Tom, is 23 years old, but has the mental capacity of a 18-month-old. Uh, and Sarah, the mum, has looked after this, this son. A completely dedicated way for 23 years and as punishment, my state, the United Kingdom, is dragging her through the court system. It's just really... We, we, we won't get mad. We'll just, we'll just report the facts. Right. He's got a congenital heart condition, that means he was born with it, chromosomal condition called partial trisomy 13. So you, you probably know that you're supposed to have two of each uh, chromosome. If you have, a, apart from the X and the Y, which are odd, uh, X, men have X and but males have XY, females have X, X. But the other ones are in pairs, and if you've got a partial trisomy, that means you've got a bit of an extra chromosome, which of course is, is abnormal. Um, tri partial trisomy 13 syndrome. Now, um, she, Sarah, dared to question whether COVID-19 vaccine was safe for her vulnerable son, is a quote. Nearly three years on, the court of protection, whether for the greater good for Tom and society will be served by him being injected. Sorry, did it say greater good? I thought vaccine was to protect the individual, not for some greater societal good. You might have different views, of course, but I tend to doubt it. Medical interventions are given to help the individual. What are they talking about here? It's already getting pretty confusing and concerning. The implications of this case are huge. I don't know quite how it works with the Court of Protection, but the British legal system works on precedent. So if there's a precedent, one time, if, if the law is passed, if a court decides one thing, then that is precedent and that will affect future judgments. You can see the implications of this are somewhat disconcerting uh, I would have thought so it um, be, be serving him and whether it's for the greater good for Tom for Tom and society yeah. incredible despite complex medical conditions Sarah says uh, claims the state is being heavy-handed um, let me think about that is the state being heavy-handed yeah it probably is actually let me know what you think I just think it's out it's just incredible Absolutely outrageous. This, this is a mother we're talking about here. Um, Stays being heavy handed, insisting that it knows better than the mother. Yes. Tom had all his childhood vaccinations, so no one can claim that Sarah is anti vax because Tom has had all of his childhood vaccinations. Uh, not good enough, apparently, for the British state. Uh, her fear about the vaccine, mRNA suitable with multiple pathology. Dentist it needs, uh, it needs antibiotics. So because of his heart condition, he needs antibiotics. Quite a few people with heart conditions need antibiotics because bacteria from the mouth can go to the heart. It just shows she needs to monitor the son's condition, medical condition, very carefully. 
In 2021, Tom contracted COVID twice and recovered quickly. Now, if he had COVID twice in 2021, would that mean he had some degree of natural immunity, polyclonal or long-lived natural immunity, for example, as opposed to the transient mono or biclonal immunity of the vaccine? I would have thought so. Well, of course he would. Anyway, Sarah repeatedly uh, asked medical professionals. I went to the GP to talk about my concerns. I explained that I was worried there was a possibility the vaccine caused my could cause myocarditis or pericarditis in a young man. Of course, there's a risk the vaccine could cause myocarditis or pericarditis, especially in that age group, especially with that medical condition. I would have thought mum's fears were remarkably justified. Now, at the end of our chat, when I said I was concerned about Tom having the vaccine, the doctor simply said he needed to tick some boxes for the relevant agencies. I didn't think any more about it. Um, this is a reg registered medical practitioner in the United Kingdom carrying out medical interventions because he needed to tick a few boxes for agencies, whatever that means. Now, a few days later, social worker turned up at the doorstep then a physiotherapist, both questioned about why Tom had not, yet, had not yet had the vaccine. I felt they should be proving to us that it's safe, not me trying to, I, that they should be trying to prove that it's safe, not me trying to prove it is not safe, said the mum. Um, I, I agree with Sarah completely. I'm just wondering there, the, the, so the GP has clearly uh, grasped up the mother to a social worker and a physiotherapist or someone uh, without consent. I wonder if that's breaching confidentiality. When you go to your doctor, would you like to know that what is being discussed is confidential? I would have thought so. People turning up at the door asking questions. It's, it's quite incredible. Anyway, it gets worse. April 2021, a court summons. So this poor woman has been through all this stress, looked after this unfortunate child, 18 month old mental age. Um, and, and she's been through all this and then the state decides to give her a court summons. Uh, and remember, we're not talking about some obscure country that exports a lot of bananas here. We're, we're talking about the Great Britain here. This is in the north of England. Um, we're not talking about a dictatorship. We're not talking about a fascist state. We're talking about Great Britain. Um, th this is, to me, ominous. Let me know what, what you think. Court summons signalling the beginning of a protracted, ongoing legal tussle with the state. Judge Burroughs apparently said it's a legal impasse. Um, not sure I agree, Judge, actually. I think it's a slam dunk, clear cut case. Should be discharged immediately, I would have thought, and the mother's wishes respected. And the mother, as the expert on her son, respected, admired, thanked, and compensated. I don't really think it's an impasse at all. But that's just me. You might have your own opinion. Uh, on the advice given to clinicians, uh, on the advice given to clinicians by effectively the UK government. So he thinks it's an impasse because of this. Right. Sarah says the risks posed by the vaccine were unclear and may be significant uh, at that age with that predisposition. Yeah, I would have thought Sarah's the mum's view is quite accurate there. Uh, Judge Burroughs again, Tom is in a high risk group. Uh, the evidence that the vaccines do give protection against serious illness and death. Mm, well, maybe in early t in 2020. I'm not sure about now. In fact, I don't think it does now. Um, whether, whether Tom may have made an altruistic decision to receive the vaccine to protect the community at large. Sorry, this is implying that the vaccines stop transmission. And we now know that the vaccines were never tested to stop transmission in the clinical trials. And any reduction in transmission is absolutely minimal and transient. What the heck are they talking about here? Protecting society. Let's go on. We'll stick to the facts. Tom may have made the altruistic decision to protect the community at large. This, this smacks of vaccinate your children to protect granny. And this uh, myth that uh, the vaccine would block transmission. Right. In other words, Tom might have behaved like a responsible citizen and considered the effect of his decision on other people 
if he had made the decision for themselves. But the vaccine is not a, is not stopping transmission. <laughs> what are they talking about? It's in Tom's best interest to receive the vaccine, the judge thinks. So, yeah, the judge thinks it's in Tom's best interest to receive the vaccine. Well, I thought judges were legally trained. I would have thought deciding whether to receive a vaccine or not is a medical decision. I mean, next time I want some medical advice, do I go and see a lawyer? Next time I want some legal advice, do I go and see a doctor? Next time I want my electrics fixed, do I go to a bricklayer? Next time I want some engineering work done, do I go to the gardener? Next time I want some gardening advice, do I go and engineer? This is preposterous. Bricklayers don't fix wires. Electricians don't lay bricks. And yet this judge appears to be giving medical advice. I mean, no, no one's saying the judge is being leaned on by higher powers. Um, we assume the judge is making his own decisions. Court battle is still going on. Sarah's got a crowdfunding site called Force Vaccinations on Our Loved Ones. So far, they've raised £35,000 and Sarah's spent £25,000 of her own savings. So Sarah, having looked after this poor boy all his life, 18-month-year-old equivalent, has now had to spend £25,000 of her savings protecting her son from the power of the British state. What is happening to our countries? What is happening? Really? Uh, an expert professor, uh, world expert in trisomy 21, told the court the vaccine could pose a threat to Tom. Well, th that should be automatic dis dismissal of the case, of course, with compensation and full apology. But no, it's still going on. So as if Sarah's word, as if mum's word wasn't enough, we've now got a professor and an expert saying it's not enough. It seems some legal people know better. Why, why would they do that? I'm just trying to struggle. Why, why would they do that? What possibly could be the motivation? Most actions have a motivation behind them, don't they? Very strange. Let me know what you think. If the court ultimately orders that Tom should be vaccinated, any attempts by his mother to prevent that happening could culminate in her being jailed or assets being seized. This poor woman could be put in the situation where she has to choose between the health of a child and going to prison. That should not happen in my country. In my view. But hey, what do I know? The state obviously knows better. Our role is simply to comply, isn't it? Click our heels at the right time. Sarah. Sarah. He is currently a fit, well young man with no comorbidities and he takes no medication. I mean, his risk from COVID now is negligible. The injection could potentially could or injure him. Yeah, yeah, that sounds reasonable to me. Yeah. Um, he was given the vaccine. One of my greatest fears is that he cannot speak and express how he's feeling and should, should he have an adverse reaction, of course. I've dedicated my whole life to overseeing his health and worked tirelessly with the medical community to develop intricate and personalised care regimes. It's my care which has contributed to Tom, Tom living until he's 24, despite trisomy 13 often resulting in life limitation. This woman should be rewarded, acknowledged and thanked, not put through this intolerable, well, must be intolerable stress, I would have thought. For the judge to believe that Tom would take it for the sake of others, the so-called altruistic view denies the possibility that there was any risk at all to Tom, uh, I would think he'd protect his own life by not taking it. So having lived with Tom for 24 years, having carried him in her uterus for nine months, I would have thought she knows best. But the state would seem to have other views on this. All I've ever wanted is to be a great mother and to protect my son. I believe that is his mother. I know what is best for him. Right, let us take one other view here. This is from uh, the always uh, astute Dr. Claire Craig. The court is meant to make decisions in the best interests of the patient. The judge introduced arguments about protecting others. That goes against all principles of medical ethics. 
the vulnerable have no duty to protect society. That goes against all principles of medical ethics. The vulnerable have no duty to protect society. Hard to believe if it wasn't in the reputable paper that's checked this out thoroughly. Let me know what you think. I mean, ominous intrusions of state and potentially international power are a threat, I, I feel, and this is a, maybe a, uh, let's hope this isn't a portentate of that. Give me your views, and uh, if we hear any more on this story, of course, we'll, we'll follow it up. But for now, thank you for watching.